Did you know that the first lawnmower was invented in the UK by Edwin Beard Budding? Did you know the same guy also invented the first adjustable wrench? Thank you, UK. Thank you, Edwin. The last part of the video series is going to be about my mower deck. I used a gas engine lawnmower frame because I'm going to have my adjustments on my wheels for my height and I'll have all the mower functions that I need. The only thing I did was I added this mounting bracket on the rear that will go to the little uh, chassis that pushes it, the electric chassis. What I did was before I removed the mower engine, I measured the height of the blade to the bottom of the mower. And that way when I, when I rebuild it with a mower deck spindle, when I build it, rebuild it with a spindle, the blade will be back at the same height that it was when it was a gas engine, because I, I need that height to be the same. Notice here, I also used the same blade that was on here. This is a 21 inch blade. It's good hard steel, there's no way I'm gonna drill that. And then what I did, I had a, a mower deck. This is the actual mower deck spindle. The, you'll notice it has, it has mounting so that I can mount this to whatever I want. And then this mounting right here is where the blade goes. And then, I, then from there, it has a pulley on top for I can hook a fan belt or whatever I want to it, or I could do a direct drive from my motor. The motor that I had is a shunt wound motor. It's running at 6,500 RPM. I decided to go with a, a fan belt pulley, or I'm going to use a belt, a V-belt. I'm using a smaller pulley on my motor going to a larger pulley on the blade. This will give me a lower ratio. So my 6,500 RPM from my motor is going to be a little too fast for this. Most mowers, I think, are running between uh, 2,800 and 3,200 RPM. So with my smaller pulley and then my larger pulley, I'll, I'll bring my RPMs back down to where I want to be. Okay, that's how that's going to work. Next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to mount this to a plate, which will then be mounted to where the motor used to be. But remember, I got to have the same height to, of my blade. So I made some spacers. I use spacers that are going to go on here that when they're on, they're going to bring me back down That'll make the blade the same height as it was. Okay, then this, I'm gonna, let's go ahead and put those on so I can show that. Okay, now I mounted the mower deck spindle at the same height as the blade was in, when, it, when it had a gas engine on it. Let me, let, me, let me flip this up so you can see what we did. And I'll bring the camera over. You'll notice. It's in the same place that it was. It's obviously going to turn this way because it creates a suction up. And then I, my plate is right here. So I cut a plate, I mounted it, and right back in here, I put spacers here to bring it down to the same height. So now I'm back to where I was when it was a gas-powered mower. But the wonderful thing here is now I have a pulley, some bearings and a shaft that I can actually attach to and put some power to. It doesn't have to be a gas engine. If I wanted to at this point, I could put a gas engine on a pulley. Uh, but I'm going electric. So let me, let me bring the camera up and get a closer look. If you look down in there, you can see my pulleys against the plate that, that are putting it down to the height that I want. Let's flip it up and take a look at the blade. Right here, see, you can see my plate. You can see my spacer. Uh, it's already been used. You know, I wasn't going to do something that was not tested. So that's where all this grass came from. Mows quite well. Mows as well as it did before. It has plenty of power. My 1.59 horsepower shunt wound motor uh, has plenty of power to go through the grass. I can mow about a half of an acre with my two group 24 batteries. And this is a 21 inch blade. All right, let's flip it back down. I have a pulley here that somehow I'm going to have to get power to it, and I need a way to make it simple. Now, 
the, the, the seemed like the simplest way to me to, would, would be to mount some sort of a sliding belt on here. Let me show you what I came up with. Okay, this is my motor, a little heavy. Uh, set this on here. And then what I did, put some mountings on the motor that bolted to the motor. And then what I did was I built a bracket that came up and would slide back and forth. So what I now have is an infinitely adjustable fan belt so that I can make it as tight or as loose as I want. Then what I did after I, I put the mountings on there, I set the fan belt on the motor the same height as the fan belt on the lawnmower itself when it was tightened up. And then at that point, I welded this to this mounting. So now I have my belt to right height. So the only thing I have left is to make it adjustable, which I have. If you'll notice, see it will adjust in or just out. And if I go all the way in, I'm gonna come over to the other side. The fan belt will go on here, then it goes on to the motor. Here we go. Very simply, I push out, put some pressure on the belt. See, I get it. It doesn't have to be too tight because the belts have a lot of friction. Then I just tighten up right here in the back. The nice thing about the belt uh, is also if I hit a rock and it brings it to a dead stop, it won't damage the motor. It's just going to slip the belt. So I can put the belt as tight or as loose as I want. I'm going to get it. Uh, this is probably about the same as a, like a alternator on a car belt, the V belt. Okay. Now let's take a look at how we're going to attach the mower to the electric power unit. Um, 24 volt unit, 24 volt motor, and I'll go through how it's hooked up and then we'll take it for a quick little run. All right. Raise it up. Right there. I, I put a couple little blocks of wood under the backside just to hold it in place so that it's at a comfortable height for hooking up. There. Okay. Then I'm going to take these are the little adapters that go to it. There. I'm going to even up the distance. So this is going to give me the ability to lift the mower up as I go. So I'm going to go ahead and set these. And then these little these washers down here will hook over. Before we go into the final hookup of the mower, I thought I better just show the wiring that we're going to be using to make it operate. Um, start out here, back to our batteries. We're, we're going in series, so we'll have 24 volts on our batteries. Notice that we'll have a solenoid here that is operated by a momentary switch. All right, so we go from our positive on our battery over to one side of the solenoid, and, and the other side of the solenoid is going to go to the positive on the motor. So this is just, this is where we're going to switch it right there. Now our negative side of the motor can either go down to chassis and then the ground of the battery can go to chassis or you just run the cable all the way from there to the battery. That way you make sure you have a good ground all the way to the motor. All right, so that, that takes care of our heavy load. Now this solenoid is going to be activated by a switch that's going to be up on the handlebars. Um, Remember, this is a 12 volt switch, so I'm going to go over here to the battery that is grounded. That way I'll get 12 volts. This will come up and then go through the switch, and then the switch itself will turn, will close and open the plates inside the solenoid. It's a 100 amp solenoid. It's plenty for this. Now you want to 
you want to add a um, fuse or a breaker of some sort in here. I don't have one on mine right now, but I will before I'm done. Um, as close as the battery as you can go, right here on this positive, you're going to want to put a 100 amp fuse or breaker. On here, on this one, you're going to want to have the 10 to 15 amp fuse or breaker to protect this wire. Um, remember, this is going to be a momentary switch on off, so if you let your finger off, it's going to shut off. That, that's what you're going to want for that mower because you don't want that thing running when you're not pushing it or near it. So go with a momentary switch right there. And let's see, it looks like we have everything. And one more thing about my motor that I have. I have a shunt wound motor because it was just really cheap and I got a hold of it. You can use um, a permanent magnet motor on this. I think that would probably be the best motor. A permanent magnet motor is going to run around 3200 RPM to 2800 RPM. And one horsepower is going to be what you're going to need to run that 21 inch blade. A 1.5 horsepower would be better, but one horsepower will do it. Most of uh, the electric mowers that you'll see, they're running a 16 to 18 inch blade on three fourths of a horsepower. So you, and if you want to go with a direct drive, get a motor that's going to run more than 2800 RPM and less than 3200 so that you could go for a direct drive. All right, next we're going to look at the actual hookup. Attaching the switch. Now remember, the mower is going to attach to the power side that goes to power wheelbarrow. My positive lead on my mower is going to attach to here. This will be my, give me my 24 volts. Okay, then this is going to go here. Main negative lug is going to go to the other side. It's going to go to my main negative over here. Right here. This would be my negative lug where everything attaches. This is my 12 volt lead that's going to excite the solenoid. I'm going to use that. I'm going to run 12 volts to it. So remember, I'm going to use this battery over here so I'll get 12 volts instead of 24. It will run on 24, but it will last a lot longer if we run it on 12. Now let's, let's, let's take a look. I want to go grab the camera. We'll take a look at it. Now let's take a look at our mower electrical. Okay, as we saw in the previous scene, or as we saw previously, this is a shunt wound motor. My negative is grounded to the chassis of the motor. My positive is insulated from the motor. We have our fan belt. Okay. Then we're gonna come over here and we have a solenoid. This will carry 100 amps. Uh, this will run about 60 amps when it's under full load, about 60 amps, so we're well within. Our positive comes to here. This will be our switch to actually turn it off and on. This is the exciter lead that comes from my switch up above. Let's follow that. This wire right here goes to this. I'm gonna turn it, just do a quick little flip. All right, then the power to run the solenoid, since it's a 12 volt solenoid, it, it needs 12 volts. Otherwise it could probably burn it up if I ran it on 24 volts too long. So. Over here, my power for the solenoid comes from here when I hooked it up. And then my, so my 12 volt, or sorry, my 24 volt main comes from this side of the battery. We have a jumper over to here from negative to positive. And then it, our main negative goes to where all of our other negatives are. And that will get us into our mower. 